could be a difficult mission. Today on Dino Squad, Ms. Moynihan is captured by Victor Velocity. He's got her! Can the Dino Squad rescue her before Velocity discovers Moynihan's true identity? We have to get her back. Go, Go Dino! Dino! Look at that. We could be out in the sunshine, sailing, instead of cooped up inside on a Saturday, studying a bunch of useless subjects like Greek mythology. I mean, who cares what stories the Greeks told each other thousands of years ago? What's it got to do with playing better football or saving the world? I understand your frustration. It can seem like some subjects aren't relevant, but a well-rounded education is the best way to succeed in life. That's what I've been trying to tell them. Without having studied math and science, I never would have been able to design all our cool dino gizmos. You know, your frustration might not just be from all the studying, but it may be a result of being under so much stress from all the things you have to do. Midterms, after school sports, family obligations, not to mention saving the world from Victor Velocity. Veni, Vidi, Vici. Come again, sir? A Latin phrase meaning I came, I saw, I conquered. And with what I've observed over the past several months, perhaps today I will finally conquer those perfect dinosaurs. A careful study of video images of past encounters indicates there are five of them. A Pteranodon. Styracosaurus. Stegosaurus. Spinosaurus and Tyrannosaurus Rex. I've concluded that the reason we failed to capture one is because we haven't had sufficient manpower combined with the right type of mutants. But this time, I'm creating mutants from an animal species known for its wildly uncontrollable behavior. Book reports are, like, so not worth the paper they're printed on. I mean, who really cares that the Sheriff of Nottingham put a reward on Robin Hood's head? Yeah, or that William Tell shot an apple off his son's head. Or that Sir Isaac Newton got hit by an apple on his own head. The apple didn't really hit Sir Isaac on the head, Caruso. He just saw it fall. But it's a good thing he discovered the laws of gravity, or we might never have gone to the moon. So you see, it's not that what you're learning is unimportant, it's just that you haven't found a use for it. Yet. <laughs> There's a mutant outbreak in Manchester, New Hampshire. Not mutant. Mutants! Six of them! The signals are weak which means they've been contaminated, but haven't fully mutated. Looking on the bright side, at least we get to take a study break. This could be a difficult mission. I'm coming along. Good to see you again, Ms. Moynihan. You too, Arnold. Thanks for loaning us your SUV on such short notice. You're sure I can't pay you? Well, I wouldn't refuse a batch of your famous crab cakes. You got it. A dog show. Awesome. I love dogs. Not when they're two-ton scaly mutants you don't. Yeah, that could be a little too big to sleep on my bed. I'll stay here with Caruso and keep an eye out for Veloci. The readings are coming from over that way. Whatever's been contaminated, they're inside that box. Open it up. Oh, aren't they adorable? Yeah, and any second, they're gonna be adorable Labradorosauruses. <laughs> Dino One to Mother Saurus. We've got six wild puppies about to go mutant. Incoming. Bad dog. <gasps> Egg. 
Dino Puppy Slobber! Stay! Something tells me now would be a good time to go Dino! Got your back, Fiona. <laughs> These guys have been doing their homework. They've never been this well organized. Oh, dear. help them. And as much as I hate to do it, there's only one way. Um, Dr. Velocity? Don't worry, I'm not Velocity. Ms. Moynihan? Move back. You? I'd recognize that coloring anywhere. And I was hoping to never see your scaly face again. I might have known you'd be behind these perfect dinosaurs, getting in the way of my plans. Someone's got to protect the human race from a reptile like you. Someone, perhaps, but not you. Bring in the other trucks. The dudes got us this time. Not if my telepathic communication is still as strong as it used to be. Stop! Look at those men. Time to play! <laughs> They might get away this time, but you won't. He's got her! Ms. Moynihan! <gasps> it's chilling and spilling time! time. indicates that Velocity has her at Raptordyne. So, we go to Raptordyne and get her out. Easier said than done, dude. If I know Velocity, and I wish I didn't, his lair is probably hidden deeper and got more booby traps than the wickedest video game I ever played, and lost. How am I supposed to figure out a plan? Kittery High doesn't exactly offer dino commando classes. All I know is a bunch of useless history, algebra, and literature. Everything we learn is useless until we put it to use. The Brainosaurus is right. We gotta use our heads, like Newton did when he saw the apple fall. Not Newton, Robin Hood. You mean Robin Hood discovered the laws of gravity? No, I'm talking about the reward the Sheriff of Nottingham put on Robin Hood's head. So? So, Velocity put out a reward too, remember? Yeah, for anyone with information leading to the capture of a dinosaur. But what's that got to do with anything? 
Maybe we should tell him we have a dinosaur? Wait, that's it. We'll do what the Greeks did in Troy. Yeah, we'll invade Raptor Dine with a thousand ships. But where are we going to get 50,000 guys to row them? I'm talking about the Trojan horse. Only we won't use a horse. Of course not. We'll trick Velasi with the Trojan dinosaur. Why don't you just revert to human so I can see what you look like now? Of course not. Then I trace your identity and find out where you're hiding those five perfect dinosaurs. Give up your futile human pursuits. Join with me again. Together, we could succeed with my plan for global dinosaur domination! All set. Great, so here's the plan. We hook the cage to the SUV and Caruso drives it to Raptor Dine. Just before we arrive, Fiona gets in the cage and goes dino, while Roger, Buzz, and I get in the secret compartment. When Velocity brings the cage into his lair, we sneak out and rescue Miss Moynihan. Where's Caruso? Do I look cool or what? What's with the lip rug? In case Velocity's ever seen me, with this disguise, he'll never recognize me. He may not recognize your face, but no one could miss that hair. Huh? Oh. Deal or no deal? Awesome. Fiona, go for it. Go Dino! If this doesn't get him to bite the hook, nothing will. Sir, he says he just came out of his underground garage towing his dinosaur. If you don't want it, he'll take it to the local zoo. Oh, yes. It is one of the perfect ones. Tell him he'll get his reward if he brings it here immediately. Looks like I'll get one with or without your help. Judging by the signature, it's the Spinosaurus. That's it. Keep on struggling. By the time my dinosaur gets here, you'll be so exhausted that you'll have to revert to human form, and I'll be that much closer to capturing the rest of those perfect dinosaurs. He's here, sir. Let him in. Good afternoon, Dr. Velocity. This is your lucky day. Just look at that beauty. Pay him. He's taking the bait. But, uh, I haven't finished my lines. I mean, my negotiation. What is he doing? Something tells me we should have put Caruso in the cage. Negotiation? What are you talking about? I'm talking about two tons of prime Spinosaurus. Heck, Porterhouse is going for 25 bucks a pound, and this baby's worth twice that, which comes to... $200,000! Deal or no deal? No deal. Excellent! What? But, uh... Have you any idea how hard it is to capture and cage a dinosaur? As a matter of fact, I do. Which makes me wonder how an obviously not that bright young man such as yourself was able to capture a ferocious Spinosaurus and get it into that cage. So tell me, how did you manage it? Well, I... er... Uh, uh... Androcles and the lion? Now that would be a good story! As a matter of fact, Dr. Velocity, when I found this dinosaur, it was in great pain with a big thorn in its paw. At extreme risk to my own personal safety, I bravely took out the thorn. Then the lion, er, dinosaur, was so thankful it befriended me. So, uh, after school and metal shop, I built this cage for it. Sounds like a fable to me. Look, sir, it's true. And, uh, seeing as how her paw is still sore, I'll accept your generous offer. Deal? 
deal. Take it down to the lab. Yes! Don't worry, Miss Moynihan. We're going to get you out. Whatever you're planning, do it quickly. I can't remain in Raptor form much longer. Take some DNA samples and get a full body scan. I want to know the secret to these perfect dinosaurs. He's going to find out we're a bunch of high school dinosaurs. We gotta stop him. Hold your horsesauruses. We've got to wait for Fiona's signal. <sighs> Find her! Today's my lucky day. Buy one, get three free. Get the DNA sample. Now I know what it feels like to be a lab rat. There's gotta be some way out of this. What are those buttons? I can't read them. I think they're written in Raptorese. No, that's Latin. Why would Velasa use Latin? Because he's been around for ages and probably spoke Latin long before he spoke English. I know these words. The first means warning. The next is cage. Then cold... Salvo? I don't know that one. I told you Latin was useless. No. We can figure it out by finding English words with the same root. Like solve. Dissolve? Solve it. What do they all have in common? You solve a problem, dissolve something into water, get paint off with a solvent. They're all about breaking things up. Or getting rid of something. Or getting free from it. Free from a problem. Free up the solid paint. Or free us from this cage. It must be the release button. What if it's the dinosaur dissolving solvent release button? We'll have to take that chance. Get them! Best chance to grab Velocity and destroy his lab. That cage won't hold Velocity for very long. He's too strong and too clever. Gotta get Ms. M and get out of here now. I'm so glad you're okay. I'm proud of all of you. Not just for rescuing me, but for doing it by so brilliantly using what you've learned. Who'd have thought Greek mythology could be so useful? Or Latin. Scientia est potentia. Knowledge is power, dude. Indeed it is. That's why I love teaching, and why you all need to study hard and complete your education. Yep, everything we learn has value. Take American history. Why, even though it was over 200 years ago, the Boston Tea Party is still significant. How right you are, Caruso. Understanding why we fought for our freedom is as important today as it ever was. I was talking about the tea. Oolong is my favorite. Just a touch of honey and lemon. 
Mmm, goes great with a cranberry scone. Can I throw him into the harbor, Ms. Moynihan? Please? I know I promised Grandpa I'd get that mural painted at the Mrs. retirement Victoria home. Vandersham, I know, but it's just so hard Vandersham to get everybody Fortune organized. Announce the three finalists for the prestigious oh, Vandersham wait, Dad, I have to call you back. Scholarship. The three finalists are a young lady named Rebecca Flatterly for her painting of a horse, a young man named Jacob Seats for his painting of a sunset, and finally, a young man by the name of Neil Basmati for his painting of a praying mantis. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Buzz. You did well. Ooh, the competition was so intense. A lot of people with a lot of talent. But this scholarship, it could mean going to the university of my dreams. It's possible. I could win. The three finalists must now attend a banquet where <gasps> they will be judged by their behavior. The finalists must display all the merits of good etiquette, including how to dine, how to dance, how to converse politely, and how to behave in high society at a black tie function. I firmly believe that an artist should be a well-rounded individual. Being an artist does not preclude one from having to be polite or civil. I may be old-fashioned in my thinking, but it is my money and my scholarship, and I think I should do what I hope is best for young people. Have a nice day. Black tie function? There's no way I can win. No way whatsoever. I'm sunk, finished, I'm through. All that stuff's totally easy. All it takes is a little practice. Oh really, Caruso? What do you know about haute dining? I'll have you know that I am well versed in proper etiquette because when you look this good, you have to be ready for anything. If you're so prepared, why don't you help Buzz? Teach him. I don't know. It was hard work for me, and I'm me, and Buzz is, well, he's Buzz. Enough said. Can't be done. Maybe a little incentive would work. Say, how about we won't show anyone these photos from your recent bad hair day in return for your teaching Buzz proper etiquette? You wouldn't. You can do it, Caruso. You can remake Buzz into a suave social butterfly like yourself. Or the world sees these pictures. You drive a hard bargain, but I'll do it. Buzz, there are certain rules you're going to have to learn if you're going to mingle in polite company. But I'm eating. Yes, I can see that. In fact, the whole world can see that, and it's very scary. General rule, fingers do not belong in ears or noses. Forks or utensils should never pause mid-air or be used as pointers. And never chew with your mouth open. Never talk on the cell phone at the table or blow your nose. In fact, if you have to do anything other than eat and be polite and converse, excuse yourself from the table and go elsewhere. Which brings us to poise and grace. Walk with back straight, chin up slightly, confident without being arrogant. Smile. That's it, smile. Let's try that one again. Let's not. I'm not cut out for any of this. It'll never work. But we've just started. You can't give up. You have to persevere in this if you want to be successful. Keep trying. You'll get it, Buzz. Experiment 0-54. In an attempt to further develop a viable primordial ooze, I've grown a substance that should maintain its own unique DNA signature. All that remains is a field test.
Hello, Earth to Buzz. You cannot sit at the table in dinosaur form. Why not? At least as a dinosaur, it'd be obvious why I'm always knocking over the water glass or breaking the plate. I'd have an excuse. Well, I think it's pretty obvious you can't go to the big scholarship dinner as a dinosaur. I think it's pretty obvious. I can't go at all. <laughs> We gotta save those deer! Let's get prehistoric! Go Dino! Accomplices have ruined another promising experiment. Spread out! Find them! We'll never outrun them! Lucky I cooked up a few surprises over the weekend. Take a kettle of biodegradable vegetable oil, add a dollop of dry ice for steam, and voila! A perfect recipe for defeat. Or in this case, the tire. Come and pick us up! No! I've asked you all to take part in a mock dinner party as a way to maybe help Buzz see etiquette in action. So, please, all of you be on your best behavior. Ms. M, you'll be playing the role of Mrs. Vandersham? Of course. Shall we begin? Soup spoon, salad fork, elbows off the table, polite conversation, smile, back straight, Napkin neatly on lap. Okay, Bismati, you can do this. You can take a sip of water. Oops. Huh? What? Please excuse me. Ah! That could have been worse. Yeah, at least the table didn't catch on fire. That's it! I quit! I'm not doing this anymore! I won't do it. I can't do it. But you can't give up. If you just persevere, you'll get the hang of it. Let me ask you, how important is this art scholarship? Huge. It could mean the difference between going to the school of my dreams or not going at all. Then you need to stick to it. Never give up, never give in. That's true perseverance. You have such a great start if you just keep practicing, keep working at it. Hmm. Perseverance, resolve, and determination. I can do this. Sure, look at Caruso. Please do. Everyone else does. Caruso's perseverance is really admirable. Even if it's dedicated to the whole looks department. Yeah, if only he applied that much work to his studies. He'd get straight A's. You ought to try it, Caruso. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll just show you guys that I can do anything I set my mind to. Well, if you're gonna go that far, I'm not gonna let you be the only one getting it done around here. I'm going to organize painting that mural at my grandpa's retirement center.
Yes. Hey, Mr. Stinky the Stink Bug. I'm glad you're going with me. That way, I won't be going in alone. Of course you're not going in alone. We'll be right there with you. Roger and Caruso will be monitoring you from here, while Max and I will be part of the wait staff. Good luck, Buzz. You can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Ah, Mr. Buzzmarty. Welcome. I am so very pleased to meet you. Very nice bow, young man. Very nice handshake. I can do this. I really can. Allow me to introduce one of the judges for the finalist competition. A great humanitarian and benefactor to so many good causes. Dr. Victor Velocic. I so cannot do this. Very nice to meet you, sir. Well, if you'll excuse me, I probably should find my table. Oh, I believe you're sitting with me. Great! I mean, that's great. I'm looking forward to a wonderful evening. Fee, Max, you seeing this? Victor Velocity is one of the judges, and Buzz has to sit at the same table with them. We see him. Be ready for anything. I hope Buzz can hang in there. So, I hear you have an interest in insects. Yes, sir. I'm a scientist. Do you see yourself as a possible entomologist someday? Actually, sir, I do. Maybe even set up an insect appreciation program to teach everyone about bugs. I really feel people don't appreciate insects as much as they should. Buzz is doing great. I'm giving him high marks for etiquette. He's got grace, he's got poise. Diversity in nature is so important. Every species is vital. Hmm, well, yes. But some species are more vital than others. Unfortunately, random acts of nature can sometimes elevate a lesser species above a greater one. They want us to clean this? Tonight? Let's do this room later after we finish up with that artsy thing. Look at those moves! He's got it! Buzz is tearing up the place! He's doing perfectly! Wait a minute! I'm picking up a mutant's whore inside the hotel! Could it be the scans are registering Velocity? No, he's still in human mode. It's something else, something big, in the large reception room a few doors over. Perhaps I'll call it an evening. Telephone call for you, sir. What? Telephone call? Oh, telephone call, yes. If you'll excuse me, thank you, sir, for the wonderful dinner conversation. <laughs> Well, I guess it's pretty easy to see the mutant soar in the room. I've been oozed. Is that better? More original, at least. Come on, guys. Let's herd this thing into the corner and deuse it.
Nice work, guys. What is all that noise coming from next door? It's really quite disconcerting. I believe, ma'am, there was a wedding reception. But it should be all quiet now. Where are they? Why, Dr. Velocity, I thought you'd left after you entered your judgment. Did you still want dessert? Dessert? No, I don't want any dessert. <gasps> 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 What is that awful smell? I... it's... Uh, good evening. Again, I wanted to thank you for the wonderful conversation. Perhaps I shouldn't say this, but that man... Well, I know he's very generous when it comes to charities, but there is something about him I don't like. Mrs. Vandersham, in all honesty, I couldn't agree more. Sadly, there's a lot I don't like about him. But you were so polite to him. Well, it felt wrong to be rude to him at the table. Because that would only make the other people sitting there feel bad or uncomfortable. You have very good instincts, young man. What is that you have there? Um, nothing. Mr. Basmati, I demand that you show me what is in your hand. It's a stink bug. His name is Mr. Stinky. That's... that's... You know, young man, you were the favorite of all the judges, and I thought pretty highly of you myself until this moment. <sighs> but now, you are definitely my favorite as well. That is a beautiful little bug. I brought a little friend as well. Her name is Winifred. I have a pet boa constrictor named Winifred. Oh, really? My pet boa constrictor is named Stanley. Wicked sweet. I mean, <clears throat> that is very interesting, Mrs. Vandersham. Oh, please, call me Victoria. You're very genuine, Mr. Basmati. Please, ma'am. My friends call me Buzz. Yes, Buzz. Very genuine. You have wonderful instincts. That's what I look for in the winner of my art scholarship. Etiquette is something that can be memorized. With a lot of work. Yes, that's true. But good manners come from the heart. This whole dinner is designed to see how genuine someone can be in these circumstances. And you were wonderful across the board. I am very pleased to announce that the winner of this year's art scholarship is Mr. Neil Buzz Basmati. Isn't it beautiful? Once I got everyone organized, and kept them organized, it really came together. And I painted those bugs, which is great. Seeing as it was Bugs that got me that art scholarship, along with the help of my friends. No, Buzz. You did it. It was all your hard work, practice, and perseverance that got you that scholarship. And I want you all to know that with the studying I did, I got straight A's on my midterms. So you see, perseverance does pay off. Just look at me. Beautiful, talented, and smart. <laughs> <laughs> Those dinosaurs disappeared so quickly, they had to have had help from their human accomplices, who must have been at that dinner. And perhaps those humans are on this list. If they are, then I will find them. I will persevere, and I will find them. <laughs> Nice work, Roger. This kitten's purring like a turbo jet. The engine's the easy part, Fiona. It's creating a mechanical replica of arachnid anatomy I'm worried about. Confidence, Roger. Time to let it out of the web. See if your spider can crawl. <laughs> Be 
Behold, the all-terrain spider utility vehicle, capable of traversing mountains, deserts, rocks, streams, and most man-made obstacles. This buggy rocks, and I think it's about to roll. Give us a hand here, Caruso. Tag my tail. Caruso, it's the rules. You gotta tag me first. I'll tag you. Now pull the distributor cap. <laughs> Back to the drawing board, eh, Raj? It's beyond my capability. Don't be silly. Nothing's beyond the capability of our resident Geniosaurus Rex. This obviously was. I'm not a genius. I'm just another geek with impossible dreams. They're not impossible, Roger. They're just challenging. Well, I'm obviously not up to the challenge. <laughs> Hey, Ms. Moynihan, what are you working on? Still trying to find a way to cure your dino genes. Ew! With a snake? It's a harmless garter snake. Some of their DNA is similar to dinosaurs. Velocity contaminated it with ooze, but I keep it at a low temperature so it doesn't mutate while I'm examining it. Even though I haven't found the answer yet, I won't give up until you're all back to normal. I hope your experiment works better than my latest disaster. What's the matter, Roger? He's bummed out because his new SUV design has a few kinks in it. It's not just the SUV. There's my ethanol gas mixture that was supposed to get 100 miles to the gallon, but toasted the engine in Max's dyno cycle. That was no disaster. I just had to rebuild the carburetor. Then there was my holographic mutant projector that wound up attracting mutants instead of repelling them. <laughs> Those leechosauruses were horrible little suckers. But we managed to peel them off, Caruso, before they did much damage. Well, what about the pheromone spray I invented that failed to attract that skunkosaurus? Ew. Uh, that was noxious. They're brilliant inventions, Roger. Perhaps a trifle ambitious, but nonetheless brilliant. Hey, dudes. What's hey, up? Buzz? I'm taking the train to Saratoga Springs to visit my punker pal, Vinny, for his birthday. Just came by to say, Arrivederci. Hey, did I tell you? Winifred had a little baby boa. You sure it's a boa? Looks more like a girla to me. It's a guy, dude. Name's Noah. Noah the boa. Aren't you just the cutest little slimy thing? Come on, Fee. You know that snakes aren't slimy. I'm giving it to Vinny for his birthday. Here. Maybe you'd also like a mutant attractor and a super stink sprayer. Gee, uh, thanks, Raj. But Vinny's already got plenty of mutant friends that don't smell so hot. I gotta run. Don't want to miss my train. Well, this looks promising. Wake up, my little sleeping beauty. I've got another test to perform with you. Oh, dear. We've got to contact Buzz. What's wrong? He took the wrong container. This is Noah. Which means the one he's got is contaminated. Team and a buzzer, do you copy? Looks like Buzz forgot his radio again. Excuse me, 
Our friend has a... a sick snake. You've got to stop that train. Stop the train? <laughs> you kids watch too many cartoons. If that snake mutates, it could put a train full of commuters at risk. Maybe you can catch the train on your dino cycles. That won't work. We've got to think optimistically. It's got nothing to do with optimism. It's math. The train's traveling at roughly 70 miles per hour. It left the station over three minutes ago. So you have to travel nearly 75 miles per hour in order to catch up to it in an hour. But by then, you'd be going through Boston in rush hour traffic. What about the seaplane? Once the train is west of Boston, there's no body of water large enough to land on. There must be some way to reach that train. Hey, what about Roger's spider utility vehicle? You mean the disaster on wheels? The one that almost ate us for breakfast? Get real. It's not as bad as you make it sound, Roger. It might have a few bugs that have to be worked out, but it's the best chance we have. It'll never work. Of course it'll work, Roger. You're a genius. Yeah, you've got one of those, what do you call it? A green thumb. Uh, that's what gardeners have, Caruso. Okay, so he's got a green brain. Roger, we're all counting on your new invention to catch that train in time. Exactly, so what are we waiting for? Let's roll! This thing is awesome! I knew your design would work! How are we doing time-wise? According to the train schedule, bus should be just past the Haverhill station headed south toward Boston. If we head southwest at an average speed of 60 miles an hour, we should be able to beat them to the Pittsfield station, provided nothing goes wrong with the SUV. Well, according to my calculations, it's not going to be that easy. How do you figure? It's just a simple word problem. If a harmless little garter snake at 60 degrees Fahrenheit leaves Kittery Point in a train at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, how long will it take to warm up and mutate into a humongous Snakeosaurus? Better step on it, Fio. Get me the lab. Are we running any field tests today? Well, there's a mutant heading southwest out of Boston at 70 miles per hour. Must be some kind of flying creature. No, whatever it is, it's on a train. Prepare the helicopter. This is more fun than buffer cars. We're making great time, Fio. At this rate, we should beat the train to the station by 15 minutes. I knew my defective design would never get us there. Your design is fine. Let's just get this tire fixed. Just our luck. A bad jack. Oh, man. It's my bad. I added 2,000 pounds to the SUV, but forgot to upgrade the jack. Now we'll never get it fixed in time. You've got to give yourself a break, Roger. You can solve any problem, as long as you don't give up. How do we fix a tire without a jack? We don't need a jack. We've got a Caruso! What are you talking about? I'm talking about the fact that any one of us can be the jack, Jack. A Jackasaurus, that is. We got enough time to reach the train before it leaves Pittsfield. Let's get this spider crawl. The next station is Pittsfield. 
That's where we'll get on. There's the station. And there's the train. I think we can make it. I think we can. I think we can. It's Velocity. If he's after that train, it can only mean one thing. He missed the bus? The snake's gone mutant. That's not our only problem. If we don't get to the crossing before the train does, we're gonna lose this race. It's cutting it too close. No sweat, my turbo booster will get us across. No! We could have made it. Only nitwits try to beat trains. That kind of risk is never justified. Come on, Gate. The train is passed. Rise. Rise! Where's the next station? Albany. About 40 miles by train, but 30 as the crow flies. If we take a beeline to the station, we should be able to beat the train, provided nothing else goes wrong. Roger, positive thoughts. I think we can, I think we can. Whoa, whoa! Uh oh, I've been vaporized by an unidentified flying aid plane. Victory! I am the vegetarian pizza king of the pepperoni galaxy. Whoa, Raptor Dine dudes and Raptor Dine dude leader. I'm out of here. You've got to think more positively, Roger. You did a magnificent job on this audio system. Awesome sound. I didn't upgrade the audio. It's stock. I did, however, upgrade the cooling system, which is overheating. Why don't we just face it? This junk heap is never going to get us to the station in time. It will if we get some water in the radiator. Where are we going to find water around here? How about that creek? Brilliant. And just how do we get the water from there to here? Brilliant. It's out of the red zone. Close it up and let's get rolling. How about a quick wash while you're at it? I meant the car. Noah? Ah! Snakeosaurus on a train. Bad news. And worse news, it's on its way. There's another dino beyond this door. A perfect one. We've got to get through. Take a train, see the sights. Yeah, right. It's jam tight, sir. Cut through it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid we're having some trouble with the rear door and need to do some repairs. Please move to the forward cars. Get to it! Yikes! This is getting to be a real pain in the train. He's not in this car. It's Velocity. What are they doing? Judging by the sprite blip, I say Buzz is on the other side of the door in dino mode, and they're doing their best to get to him. What's Buzz doing in dino mode between train cars? Judging by this other blip, I say he's trying not to get eaten by a mutant snake. 
We've got to stop Velocity. But how? Why don't we ask Roger's scanner? The scanner can't help us, but Roger can. You don't need my help. You have to. Buzz and everyone else on this train is counting on you. You just lost your confidence like all great thinkers do now and then, but persistence pulled them through. Fiona's right. I read once that Thomas Edison tried over 10,000 filaments before he found one that lighted his bulb. He didn't see it as 10,000 failures. He saw it as 10,000 successful eliminations of filaments that didn't work. You just have to change that brilliant mind of yours and start thinking positively again. I guess I have been kind of hard on myself. And each time I said I can't, it got harder and harder. But maybe I can think of something. Yeah. I think I can. I think I can. Here's what we'll do. Oh, mommy. All set? Go for it, Max. Stand back. Sir, there's another perfect dinosaur on the roof. Hurry. Can I offer you a lift? Temperature's dropping in the mail car. You're up, guys. Three, two, one, now! Buzz, let's have that video game. Got it. Okay, guys, time to go dino! Sir, I'm reading another perfect dinosaur signature, and it's heading toward the rear of the train! Start her up, Max. Purring like a kitty. More like a kitty sore as Rex. Your redesign fixed all the flaws, Roger. And it only took three attempts instead of 10,000. Couldn't have done it without you guys. I mean, helping me get my confidence back. Thanks for not letting me give up. I just spoke to the railroad company. Apparently, their security personnel caught up with Victor Velocity and his men at the Saratoga Spring Station. He agreed to pay for the damage to the train in order to avoid an investigation. Well, that'll save us a few thousand allowances. Hey, Buzz. How was the birthday party? Awesome. Vinny hated the snake, so I gave him a portable video game player. And I kept the garter snake. Now I've got a whole family. I named the one we de-used Carter. Aren't they sweet? Noah the boa and Carter the garter. Hey, Roger, I need a little help with my math homework. This word problem's got me stumped. Think you can help me out? I think I can. I think I can. I'm in, I'm in, in the Dino Squad. Don't have to be a Dino Squad hero to help save the Earth. Be cool. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Change my DNA. 